Hey everyone, in today's video, we're gonna learn one of the greatest slide solos of all time. This is Statesboro Blues by the one and only Dwayne Allman. <laughs> All right, so this guitar solo is definitely on the Mount Rushmore of all-time great solos. This is where a ton of modern blues guitar vocabulary, especially slide guitar vocabulary, comes from. It's from this solo and from just all the ideas that Dwayne's playing. So let's hop right into it from the first lick. The first chorus takes place around the 10th fret, okay? So we're in the key of D. That's where this all kind of is based out of for the first part. Starting off the solo, the first lick goes like this. So let me slow that down just a little bit more. Basically, it's kind of smeary. I've talked about this with Dwayne versus somebody like Derek. Dwayne has this sort of like paintbrush strokes way of playing, whereas somebody like Derek Trucks is more like pinpoint laser precision. Dwayne is definitely precise as well, but it's this sort of different swoopy thing. This first lick illustrates that very well. We slide into the 10th fret on the high E string. And then we slide up to 10 on the B string and back down from 10 on the B and the G sharp string like this. Those second half notes kind of blend into each other if you listen to Dwayne really carefully. That first part's like this. And then there's this little exclamation he puts at the end of that phrase. That's a great way of getting really comfortable with the slide is doing things like... It's not... You have to whip your slide into the right fret. In this case, it's somewhere between like the sixth and the flat seven. So that's at like the 12th or the 13th fret on the B string. And it's just whipped up there and then back to the 10th fret to complete the lick. Sounds like this. Right? Just that lick on its own is a lot of great stuff to work on. Muting what you're not playing, because it, it shouldn't sound like this. So after that first lick, okay, so now for the four chord, Dwayne does this awesome thing where he's still gonna be playing bass off of the 10th fret, but he's leaning into that ninth fret note on the G sharp string. That's the flat third of our one chord, right, D. In this case, that's an F natural. But this is on the G7 chord, so that's actually the, that's the flat seven of the G chord. That's why it sounds so good, and the lick goes like this. So the coolest part is that when we're playing one chord licks, we kind of think right on the fret, right? Like the major third is right here. But now since it's the four chord, Dwayne just plays this note instead, the F natural at the ninth fret. Okay, that's a little bit of the theory. To play over the chord change correctly, all you have to do is change your major third to the minor third. Now you're playing on the G chord, okay? Okay, now to wrap up the chorus, Dwayne does this really exciting thing to build excitement going into the next chorus where he's gonna take it up an octave. But to set us up for that, he goes like this. <laughs> so 
So there's not too much going on as far as note choice. It's pretty simple. It's starting on the root. It's very root heavy. You know, we're hitting this D up here. This is a really good exercise to move across one string um, and play a lick instead of just in one position, like at the 10th fret. Now he's expanding a little bit of what the slide can do and playing things like playing at 10 and then sliding up from 13, coming back to 10. So that's like this. Okay, that's not like this. It, that's different because I'm playing the 15th note or the 15th fret up on the B string. It's a D note, but we get this different action when we physically move the slide from here. We really like that. This is okay. It's a little more convenient, but it doesn't have the sound that the lick has if you play it on one string, that high E string. Okay, so pay attention to that. Try to get really comfortable moving further on one string. That's definitely something that I want you to get from this lesson. Next up, after we just hammer home that D, now we're gonna play everything that we would play normally here at the 10th fret, but we're gonna go up an octave. So I'm gonna just about run out of frets. You probably will too, but we're gonna go up to the 20th fret, which is where this next chorus of solo takes place. And now, Dwayne goes like this. <laughs> Quick tip, be sure to learn all of these licks one by one, slowly but surely. You can learn the whole solo, that's for sure, but I would just break it down into little bite-sized chunks. That's how you're gonna get the most out of this lesson, okay? So keep watching it over and over, listen to my intro where I play the whole solo, and just break that down part by part, okay? That's gonna save you in the long run, I guarantee it. Okay, so now that we're comfortable way up at the 20th fret, it's a different lay of the land. Everything's laid out just the same, right? But like I just said a moment ago, everything's way closer together. So we don't have to move quite as much to get some of the phrasing that we had to down here at the 10th fret. But let's just go down lick by lick, starting with this. So this is all classic Dwayne everything, you know, but it's just happening between two frets and it's all about your little licks. Right, just rocking back the slide between two frets. There's so much vocabulary that we get out of this. So. That very first thing Make sure that you're muting all of the strings that we don't want to hear. Your thumb should just be coming all the way up to the G sharp string. See how my thumb is on the G sharp string? What that does is it allows me to pick this B string while muting the high E string. So I can just go. And then when I want to, I move that down one string to go. Okay, you see how that's just a unit that moves around? I'm, I make sure that that's how it works the entire time. So it doesn't matter what string I'm playing, I just can grab it and play my heart out and I'm not gonna hear other strings ringing out. Okay, this is going to really test your ability to do that. So it's worth working on, it's worth muting what you're not playing all the time. You can always make things unmuted if you want, but it's harder to just get to that point where only one thing is happening and the rest is muted. This will test that. Also, what we're doing here is we get all these really beautiful between the nooks and cranny notes, right? Like we're dealing with the 20th and 18th fret, but there's so much great. <laughs> right? 
right? If this was like guitar tab, we'd be saying 18.25, 19.68, you know, it's all in between the nooks and crannies. And that's one of the beautiful things about transcribing a solo like this. You really have to, you know, there are some sort of imperfections in the notes. And I mean, it's all, it's, it's all your opinion, of course, but there are some notes that aren't quite on pitch, but that's part of the sound here. That's part of the style. And that's what doing things like If you get it just right, like this recording, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we can learn by how somebody put vibrato on a note, by where they played the note. So that's the sort of thing that I want you to be able to get from this solo. It's great to learn the whole thing note for note. But if you can just get a little phrase, just a little part, little part at a time, just learn them so well that you sound like Dwayne. Then you start playing on your own and it'll start sounding like you before you know it. I guarantee it. So learn these licks one at a time. Just get them slowly. Try to get the whole thing if you can. But just getting a little part and just having that affect your playing is kind of the goal here. Okay, so now the cool thing about this is that Dwayne kind of follows the same pattern that he did for the first chorus. You want to be able to slide really strongly with conviction on that G sharp string into the 21st fret. When you play that note, that's the F natural. That's the G7, okay? That sounds like we're on G7. And he did that exact same thing just down an octave the first time around, right? So here he goes. <laughs> Okay, and you can just see it doesn't take too much moving around here. I'm definitely being precise and specific, but it's much less of a large swoopy action lower on the necks when you're way up high. Okay, it's more of just a, a slight little like sliding from you know 22 to 21 is maybe ah uh, it's about half as far as going from 10 to 9. So just make sure that you spend enough time getting those inflections right in both places because they're slightly different. Okay, now to wrap up the solo, Dwayne is up here. And he does this awesome lick that we love hearing him do. It's this classic harmonica lick. And it's, the thing about doing it way up here is that the, the magic really comes from sliding your slide back from 22 to 20. And then immediately playing that 22nd fret note on the G sharp string. So it's like this. Okay, it's not like... It's faster. It's got to be... Ben -a -ben -a -ben -a. So at the end there, it's... And I love that lick a lot. It's really fun to just hang on that. You can do it all sorts of different little ways. He's just going back and forth and back and forth. So where it sort of spit out is at that 21st fret on the G string and you complete the lick at the 22nd fret on the D string, the fourth string. So again, this last thing is like this. So that's the solo broken down. Those are all the parts and it's funny, it's a similar roadmap, the first chorus and the second chorus, right? They aren't like totally different things that he's doing. So to me, there's a very cool thing that happens and being guitar players and using patterns, things like that, that we can to our advantage, if you get really good at playing in one zone, there's a great way to take it up a notch. You just take it up an octave. And if you play those same exact things, they just have more weight. They have more, you know, it, it's heavy when, when you really dig in and you, you can take it somewhere else. You can really raise up your, your playing by going up high. So it's not necessarily about 
having a ton of vocabulary, having a ton of things you can say. I think if you can just get really comfortable playing in a position, like in this case, get really good at playing at the 10th fret. That means like 10 and eight, and you know, you can go around. You don't just have to stay at 10, of course, but it's really centered out of 10 and all of these really cool uh, Dwayne Allman sounding things like he did, especially in that first chorus. <laughs> I only went out of this eight to 10 zone once right there up to 13. And I just played one note up there. The rest of it was all between eight and 10. So work on that vocabulary, get really comfortable just in that zone first. I guarantee you, if you wanna play things that are harder, like single note runs up and down strings, like a Derek Trucks type of run, um, that you have to work on this sort of thing first. Those long string runs are really tough. And if you can't do this sort of position-based playing first, then I just highly recommend you stick with that until you're comfortable with it. I'd recommend that you listen to this solo over and over and over again. I'm sure that there are some things that you'll hear that you might not have heard before once you both listen to it over and over and then try to get your hands on it. This is a great way to transcribe music in general, guitar solos, other solos by other instrumentalists. This is just kind of how I like to go about it. Just listen, 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 and then get your hands on it and see what is and what's not lining up between you and the recording. And of course, while it's great to sound something like Dwayne Allman, that's not my goal ultimately. I wanna sound like myself, but I think the path to getting your own sound is by learning Dwayne Allman, Derek Trucks, Jimi Hendrix, Jeff Beck, you name it, your guitar hero lists of people, um, other saxophones, uh, piano, vocalists. If we can just learn and learn and learn, transcribe all the things that we can, that's how your sound comes out at the end of the day. So this sort of detail going into a solo like this will only improve everything that you're able to do. I would highly recommend if you're not already, try to learn to transcribe by ear. I can definitely help you do this if you'd like, I both have a masterclass video that will probably be a lot of help to you. And I also teach private lessons. So feel free to hit me up. I would love to work with you on this sort of thing. But I, I think that there's so much to be gained. You'll get your own voice out of this sort of really, really nitpicky, uh, intense study of somebody like Dwayne Allman. Also be sure to subscribe to my channel. We're putting a video out every week, so you won't want to miss it. Thank you so much. I'll catch you next time.